You guys all remember Static and the Static Shock show, right? Whatever happened to him? Because it seems like he's popular, but he never shows up anywhere. But this is going to take a lot of explaining, and it involves a lot of rumors and actual quotes from individuals involved. I'm going to try to cite as many sources as we can get, or at least specify if something is just a straight rumor. But to understand Static and Static Shock, you need to understand Milestone Comics first. The publisher was founded in 1993 by the Coalition of African American Artists and Writers, and while there are many names attached to this, you're going to hear the name Dwayne McDuffie throughout the video. He's one of the creators and the owners of the company. The founders believed that at the time, American minorities were severely under represented in American comics, and they wanted their publishing house to address this. While this is still a heavy issue in comics, that's an entire separate video. But if you feel that minorities are underrepresented in your comics today, don't even look back to the 80s and the 90s. Comics had mostly been all white males and skimpily clothed women before those dates, and they were still growing up as an actual source of entertainment media, which would eventually grow past campy shows and humor. Anyway, Milestone worked out a publishing deal with DC Comics. The imprint was to be published through DC. DC, but they did not fall under DC's editorial control. The only thing DC was allowed to do was to say no to anything that they didn't want to publish. Milestone retained all copyrights to their characters and the final say on merchandising and licensing deals. Basically, DC licensed the rights to use the Milestone characters, editorial services, and creative content for an annual fee and a share of the profits. It seems to be the most basic explanation of the deal between DC and Milestone at the time, and where a lot of the confusion from the fan base comes from. This information comes out of the book Black Superheroes, Milestone Comics, and their fans. Everything seemed fine though. Milestone would create the Dakotaverse, a merged universe for its own characters such as Icon and Static, and DC would license the rights to them and publish those characters in the Dakotaverse. And never would the two cross paths until it all went wrong. In 1997, Milestone Comics ended its run in the comics industry. And they did so mid-storyline, too. They didn't even get an official ending to the stories that they were running. While they had the advantage of being associated and published by one of the big two comic book companies, the comic crash happened right when they were beginning to do well. At the time, a lot of imprints and universes were being created, and due to their attempt to bring minorities into comics, Milestone Comics was kind of shoehorned as the comic books for blacks. And they were unable to touch into the non-African American demographic. This gave the books limited exposure at comic book stores as the comic store owners just figured their readers wouldn't enjoy these books. So eventually, after a number of reasons, Milestone ended and became nothing more than a licensing company. Who had the licensing already under lockdown? DC Comics, which eventually led to Warner Brothers Animation producing the Static Shock television show. The show itself received many awards, and it was very well received. It consistently ranked high in the numbers and even remained the 18th most watched cartoon on television in its last year. It was praised for its multicultural approach and it was encouraging diversity. And regardless of all of that, it was also toted as providing super heroic entertainment and providing a role model for not only African American viewers, but audiences of all colors and ages. Seriously, this show is great. I even watched it as a kid myself in my block of superhero cartoons. Now, this is the beginning of the idea that Static could be in the DC Universe. And it was later that McDuffie explained in an interview with worldsfinestonline.com that when they made the original licensing deal, DC didn't do deals like that, where they would license a character to bring into the DC Universe. They would license out characters to keep in their own universe. DC just published other lines. Well, a few years after the original Milestone deal, DC started to entertain the idea of licensing other characters and making them a part of the DC Universe. But at this time, Milestone was already established. The Dakotaverse was a thing. And this is why the comic books never merged, but this problem didn't exist in the cartoon universe. They could easily bring Static into the DC animated universe with a new origin and make him a part of the DC family. So they did it. And the idea that Virgil was a DC character became more prominent and everyone started to believe Static was just another DC superhero. Now sadly, the show lasted until 2004, and if you're watching any of these What Happened To videos, then you know that during this period, there was a big shakeup in cartoons and their distributors. Once again, as quoted by McDuffie in an interview with The World's Finest Online, Static Shock was canceled due to poor merchandise sales. It really seems like a lot of our favorite cartoons were simply canceled because they couldn't sell toys. And for those of you who argue against the whole merchandising thing mattering, just consider for a moment why Disney and Marvel haven't just outright thrown a bunch of money at Sony to recover 
Spider-Man. It's documented that they make close to $1.3 billion a year in Spider-Man merchandising because they have the rights to the merchandising, just not the rights to the movie. So these big companies see the value in merchandising over the value of, say, an actual property. So while having a successful and highly regarded cartoon like Static Shock is a good note for the company, not being able to tap into the world of toys is the big problem. There really isn't much more to say on the show. That was the end. But what happened to Static as a character? Where did he go? Most of the popular DC Animated Universe characters like Harley Quinn and Batman Beyond got properly folded into the comics in one way or another. But once again, where was Virgil? Well, he wasn't forgotten, at least not completely. DC did make attempts to roll him up into the DC Universe following Final Crisis. It wasn't massive, but characters from the Milestone Universe did start to pop up like Icon on Young Justice. Virgil was rolled up into many of the Teen Titans storylines, such as Terror Titans, which I haven't actually read, but Terror Titans sounds like an awesome story that I really should check out. Anyway, in The Brave and the Bold, Static was even teamed up with Black Lightning. And then eventually, he was rolled up into a storyline that saw the end of his powers. And that's when the New 52 came down. Now at the start of the New 52, Static once again had his own book, until he didn't have his own book because it was cancelled. The dark era of Static started up again, but this time, plenty of rumors. See, this is where things get interesting, because there's been a few rumors that I've heard about, such as Jeff John stating that he can't use Static like he wanted due to legal reasons, but I was able to dig up actual quotes from Scott Liddell and McDuffie. First up, in an interview with Scott Liddell in September of 2012, he was asked by CBR if we had a chance of seeing Static back on the team Titans with his initial run on the book. He responded with, nothing would make him happier, however legal issues are preventing the character from joining the Teen Titans. See, that alone is just what a rumor mill needs to start a massive fire, and it did just that. But it seemingly ended there because in the New 52, Static got a comic, and then it was cancelled. Sadly, that's the way comics roll, right? Nope, because it was recently brought up again, where is Virgil? Well, a comment on Facebook with McDuffie himself stirred those fires once again. He loved stirring that pod up. You see, Miles Media on their Facebook began posting drawings and pictures of what looked like a new static comic book. It was a dream come true, but one fan commented that everything was just a tease. Where is the static comic? The account itself replied, stating that they would love to get the comic book back up and running, but the holdup is once again DC. They then stated that they are fixing that challenge. Also, at CBR, Jeff Johns mentioned having a Static Shock digital series made because he felt that Milestone was a huge part of DC and they wanted it back in the fold. Though we never did see that. And lastly, it was rather public, but Static was supposed to appear in Injustice 2. He had a full character design and moveset ready to roll, but he was cut out of the game for unknown reasons. This makes it seem like DC is holding up the entire use of the character to be nothing but jerks about the whole thing. And while maybe that's the case, I do want to present an alternate theory here. DC has Milestone in a licensing agreement. Now this can mean any number of things, and neither company is allowed to reveal the full terms of the agreement, because normally these types of deals are under very heavy non-disclosures, leading us to theorize on our own what's actually going on. But most likely, DC pays a yearly fee to Milestone Comics to use their characters at this point. This prevents them from taking the characters anywhere where else. Milestone is stuck waiting for DC to want to use these characters. On the flip side, DC most likely has to pay additional fees every time that they use a character from Milestone. This would include characters like Static and Icon, two characters that we have seen pop up. So in order to say use Static as a Teen Titan, a small fee would have to be paid out. So then the question from a business standpoint becomes, will the character of Static actually sell the book? If he can sell a Teen Titans book, why didn't he sell his own book? And if his name being on the team doesn't help sell it, why use him at all? we have to pay for that. And it all comes back down to money. If you put them on the team, they have to pay. To make a comic, it needs to sell enough to be worth printing. And most likely, the deal is similar to that with the Watchmen one that I mentioned in our Watchmen video, where as long as they keep using something from the Milestone universe once in a while, Milestone is just not allowed to take the characters back. DC has the rights to them, which leaves Virgil, aka Static, in a weird middle ground. He's a very important character culturally with his own fan base, but DC doesn't seem to see the value in using the character. Now remember, this is just a a bunch of random quotes pulled together to bring you my theory on why the character isn't in anything right now. The answer could simply be that they're building to something huge and they didn't want his comic to come out early or him in Injustice 2 yet because it would get people demanding more static before they're ready for it. Maybe static is just a DLC character for the game to be tied into the next big static announcement or something like that. Imagine in the next big DC Rebirth thing, they reach into the Dakotaverse and they pull Virgil out to join the universe once again. Anything is possible. It's a comic book, but I wanted you guys to know more about the situation since everyone loves to 
to ask me about Static Shock, the show, and its characters. But what do you guys think? What do you think the situation is? Have you heard the same rumors that I have? What do you think about them shutting down the show for the toy situation? If we're going off of your comments from previous episodes, you all think that that's bullshit, and I kind of agree. But hey, I don't run the TV industry. Let me know what you think about Static and his character and his history. And I'll see you guys next time right here at Comic Story.